another presentation of the Methodist Connection. Half an hour of hymns and songs and the stories behind them. Thank you for joining us once more and we pray that at the end of our time together, you will be refreshed and inspired. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy and righteous Lord, we bow before you in reverence and praise and with thankful hearts. We acknowledge your power and love because we know that it is only through them that we are here to worship and adore you in word and song. Let it not be just a ritual exercise, but let us feel you in all that we do and say this afternoon. May we be enriched and emboldened so that your message of hope and love will be spread to all who hear and see us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our first hymn this week is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, which is numbered 255 in the VIP. It was written in 1772 by John Fawcett, who was born in 1740 in Yorkshire, England, and was orphaned by the age of 12. He became apprentice to a tailor and was largely self-educated. By the age of 16, he was converted by the preaching of George Whitefield, and soon after, he too started to preach. He eventually ended up as the pastor of a small, poor Baptist country church in Waynesgate, Yorkshire. Let us hear this poignant hymn that exemplifies Christian love and devotion. listen to another hymn of love. This time God's love for us as demonstrated by him sending Jesus as the sacrifice for us. It is love divine or love's excelling and it is numbered 254 in the VIP. Written by none other than Charles Wesley, it is considered by many to be among the finest of his texts. Addressed to Christ, the text begins as a prayer for the indwelling of his love in our lives. A tone of praise and adoration runs throughout the hymn, but the final stanza is clearly a prayer for sanctification, for consistently holy lives. It demonstrates that we are only able to love because Christ first loved us. God is love, and we are the mirrors and bearers of that love to each other. You may remember that it was sung at the wedding of Prince William to Duchess Kate in 2011, an unusual hymn choice for a wedding. The tune is Blainwern, a Welsh Christian hymn tune composed by William P. Rowlands during the Welsh revival of 1904 to 1905. He was a teacher and a church musician of many talents who composed hymn tunes and anthems. I know you know it. So take out your hymn book and sing along to this majestic hymn. Love divine, all love's excellent. 
22 in VIB and is Savior Thy Dying Love, written by Sylvanus D. Phelps, or in some places S. Dryden Phelps, perhaps he was not fond of the Sylvanus, who was born in Connecticut, USA in 1816 and died in 1895. He was educated at Brown University, from which he graduated in 1844, becoming the pastor of the First Baptist Church, New Haven, Connecticut. He was editor of the Christian Secretary Hartford, Connecticut, and also wrote several hymns. This incredible hymn addresses the power and meaning behind Christ's sacrifice for us. The music was composed by Robert Lowry, who was an American preacher, who became a popular writer of gospel music to include Shall We Gather at the River, How Can I Keep From Singing, and Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. He is said to have remarked on Phelps's 70th birthday that it is worth living 70 years, even if nothing comes of it, but one such hymn as Savior, Thy Dying Love. It is a song we will continue to sing because the power of saving grace never fails to amaze and inspire us. Please listen to it now and see if you feel the same way.
to take my hand, which is found in the VIP at number 204, was written by Thomas Tommy Dorsey, who was an American musician and evangelist. Born in rural Georgia in 1899, the first of three children to Thomas Madison Dorsey, a minister and farmer. He often accompanied his father when he taught black children in a one-room schoolhouse. He grew up in a religious family, but gained most of his musical experience playing blues. He experienced a spiritual reinvigoration of sorts in 1928, and after a miraculous recovery from illness, he vowed to concentrate all his efforts on gospel music. He sought to fuse blues with gospel, but black churches did not like it, and they condemned it widely as being associated with sin. He, however, made an impression on the National Baptist Convention in 1930, and at the request of the, of the pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church, he formed a choir, which allowed him to introduce gospel blues, which was lively and rhythmic. He was then hired by the pastor of the Pilgrim Baptist Church in Chicago as music director, which led to the founding of the Gospel Choral Union of Chicago in 1932. Tragedy struck in 1932 when his wife Nettie died in childbirth, followed 24 hours later by the death of his son. His grief prompted him to write one of his most famous and enduring compositions, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. This experience showed him God's boundless love as he used people to shower him with compassion until the storm he faced passed him by. The original tune was composed by George Allen. However, Tommy adapted it to this new song. Here now is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Lord, 
Leaning on the Everlasting Arms is a hymn published in 1887 with lyrics by Elisha Hoffman and Anthony Showalter and music by Showalter. It is numbered 211A in the VIP. Showalter had received letters from two of his former pupils informing him that their wives had died and were seeking consolation. When responding to them, he was inspired by the phrase in Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is my refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He was so moved by this phrase that he turned the last two words into a hymn for those seeking relief in times of grief. From this noble intent, Showalter created one of the greatest hymns for times of solace as he encouraged leaning on the everlasting arms when seeking comfort. As we listen to this hymn, let us reflect on the many times that the everlasting arms have provided peace and solace to us. in the VIP, In Your Hands, written by Reverend Alan F. Curtin, a Trinidadian by birth, who was called to ministry in the Methodist Church and studied at the UTCWI. He was a founding member of the Wesley Singers in Barbados. He was born in 1940 and died in 2010. The music was composed by Patrick Prescott, who was born in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 1932. He was a virtuoso pianist and studied at Trinity College of Music in London before returning home to teach music, work as music director at the Education Ministry, and lead and perform with a number of groups. He was a well-known member of the Kingstown Methodist Church where he served with distinction as its organist for many years. He edited the Caribbean hymnal, Sing a New Song Number no. 3, and was instrumental in integrating familiar cultural rhythms and music forms into worship. He also wrote The Right Hand of God, which is well known in the Caribbean, and I dare say throughout the world. He died in 2013. This hymn reflects absolute confidence in God and total surrender to his will. So let us sing and rededicate ourselves to him. Take over all my 
thanks so much for joining me on the Methodist Connection. I am Marie Miller, inviting you to join us next week at the same time on the same station for the Methodist Connection. You may write to us or email us with your comments or suggestions for hymns you would like the choirs to sing at Jamaica Methodist Link, 143 Constant Spring Road, Kingston 8. The email address is mainoffice at jamaicamethodist.org. You may also send us WhatsApp messages and voice calls at 876-445-5713 or 876-925-6768. Do continue to support us by joining us each week in viewing these programs and experience God's blessing through song. We invite you too to make our love gifts for the upkeep of this ministry. Please make checks payable to the Jamaica Methodist link or use one of the contacts on your screen to arrange for electronic transfer deposits. I would like to say thanks to the persons who have reached out to say how blessed they have been by these programs and particularly to a lady I met last week Saturday at the Unit Church who said that she never misses the program. So we thank you very much. I'm so sorry I did not get your name, but I hope you are watching this week and you know who you are. Have a blessed evening. The peace of Christ be with you now and always. Peace.